Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show how you can create web components using only vanilla Node.js and vanilla JavaScript. Wait, 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 I'm not talking about Shadow DOM, I'm not talking about all the JavaScript world related to the client-side rendering, okay? I'm talking about server-side rendering. I know that out there there are a lot of frameworks that do these things like React, like Astro, like Quick, and every day you have a new framework to do these things. But I think that these frameworks are very heavy to move and they bring with them a lot of code that I don't want in my projects. So I've tried to find a solution by myself and this is the outcome. So now, for example, I want to say width, 300 pixel, eight, 300 pixel, and background color, okay, red, okay. For example, here I want to insert a paragraph and I want to say here hello. If I go inside my HTML, I can invoke my components by say card components, which is the folder name. And inside the triple dash, we are able to declare the component name, card components, and we don't have any other variable here. so. I can save my HTML file. If I refresh the page, as you can see here, we have this code. And if I refresh the page here, we have these components here. But doesn't end here, my friends, because with this feature, we are able to make dynamic components. Yes. And I will show you how we can do that. So first of all, we have to go inside our index.html file of our components. And here we can declare a variable like that. And we can say paragraph, for example. Let's save our component HTML file. And here inside this markup, we can say paragraph, okay. And say, for example, some random paragraph. And if I save here and I refresh, as you can see here, my friends, we have some random paragraph. So I can copy these components along in my project in this way. And for example, I can change in every single string here value in this way. Okay, let's save. And as you can see here, we have every time a different variable. And to bring this future inside your project, you don't need any module, you don't need any framework, you don't need any heavyweight framework, you don't need anything. You need only one helpers.js files with less than, let's see, 150 lines of vanilla JavaScript. That's all guys, you don't need anything else. And another thing that I want you to notice is that if you delete every component inside your HTML source code, like this, okay, okay, and you save the HTML file, if we go inside the source code that we have before, as you can see, we have a style tag inside our HTML file, okay, inside our source code with all the style of our components, okay? And I want you notice that I even restart my Node.js server, okay? So I simply delete all my components inside my index.html file, I save my index.html file, and now if I refresh the page, as you can see, we don't have the style and we don't have the component. So, this means that the future that you have built bring the components inside your project and is related style only if you invoke them inside your HTML file. So you will be sure that in your project, in every HTML page of your project, you will have only the component related CSS code you need. If I go back, okay, 
and for example i want to delete all the components but take only the hamburger button and i save my index.html if i reload as you can see here we have only the styles of our components okay and this means as well that if you are using the same components more time, this feature is able to import that component styles only one time, okay? In this way, you don't have the same code repeat over and over again. So if we try to go back here and we try to, uh, for example, um, delete all the components that we have, but to left only the card components if we save here and we refresh our html page as you can see we have the card component style but included only once okay another thing that you must be careful using this feature is this one as you may notice all the components related css styles will be parsed inside our html file okay within a style tag in the head this will be inline style this means that will be fast okay but um there is no separation okay there is no absolute separation between components so in order to avoid uh, css class conflicts you have to carefully name your css class for example if we go in our card component a good strategy is to name every single class of this component with the component name himself in this way you can literally avoid to have two components with the same class okay this is the only things that you have to pay attention using this feature and with this feature you will be able as well to include javascript inside your project because it's very simple at this point you have only to create a folder inside your components and import that javascript using the es6 syntax into your app.js file or into your main js file okay but um, as you can see from our index.js file the server that I built now is not able to understand JavaScript file because I simply hear reading uh, the content of our index.html file, okay? And I only pass that string inside our interpolate function that is the function that allows us to ship this feature, okay? But in a real world server, you will be able to put this feature just before your Node.js server grab your HTML source code to manipulate that code with our interpret function and to give it back to our browser, okay? It's very simple, you don't need anything special. But going back to what we are saying before about the JavaScript integration in your client-side code, you can do something like that, okay? You can create a folder here with a JS file, okay? And inside here, an index.js file, okay? And um, as I said before, our server is not able to understand JavaScript files. So uh, at the moment, I will try to explain what I want to say by writing all things inside this file, okay? But uh, if you have a main.js file and your server is able to understand JavaScript as normal, okay? You can do something like that. In your components, okay? You can do something like export, const, change, color, and async function, okay? And here we want to pass an element, and here we want to use, oops, try catch to catch the error, okay? And here you can say, element dot style dot background color is equal for example to blue okay and in your main js okay in your main js you can do uh, let component 
is equal to document dot query selector I don't know component okay okay and you can do something like that component dot add event listener for example click and here you can do a thing function okay and here you need to wrap all inside a try catch block okay another time and you can do something like that await okay import okay i don't know the folder of your uh, component so in this case will be components card components js index.js and here okay you will have change color okay and here you will pass our element okay that will be for example here the component okay okay in this way when your browser will load your main html file or your html file and we load your main js you will load only the javascript needed to trigger the events okay the function will be here and will be called okay only if the users click on that element okay in this way you are able to ship application with very 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 low javascript okay and very high performance Hey, hey, dude, wait, but the other frameworks out there are able to understand server-side JavaScript in the HTML file, okay? They name this file with their own extension like JSX, like .astro, like .quick, and so on. But we, in this way, we are not able to pass server-side code in our HTML file. And guys, this is not true because I have a version of this feature that I use for myself that is able to understand server-side code from your HTML source code. So in this way, you are able to make database call and you are able to render um, into your browser, okay, uh, the data that you need that you gather from your database. And in this way, using these things in combination with the future that you see before that you are able to put variables inside your components you will be able to uh, create dynamic components using the data that you gather from your database okay but but i don't want to show this future now because if you are interested in this future let me know in the comments below if we arrive at least 10 or 15 comments and 10 and 15 like i will ship this future also to my youtube friends okay and now who want to know how this future works i think nobody okay so <laughs> i will upload this future on github if you want to take a look at the source code and how we can manipulate these strings, uh, you can feel free to go there and look by yourself. But um, are all things that are very, very understandable by everyone. OK, so I don't want to waste your time by explaining what this code do line by line. OK, if you are interested in these things, you can do to take this code and um, maybe you can improve it. Thank you very much guys for um, watching my videos. Uh, I hope that you like this video. If you want to support more content like this uh, and you want to support my channel, please uh, let me know in the comment below what you think about it. If you have something to improve, if you have some new ideas, we can do things together, okay? No problem. At the end of the day, thank you for watching my videos. See the next one.